To be honest, I'm not really a lollipop person anymore. So let's put this to some good use and see some colorful redox chemistry instead. Swedes have had a rough time over the years. Um, we've made them scream. We've turned them into snakes. And today they're going to help us to explore the oxidation states of manganese in what seems to have become dubbed the chameleon reaction. This, of course, is not the only color changing redox reaction that we've covered, which includes sugars. But while beyond the blue bottle will, I think, always be my favorite, the sheer flexibility, speed and reliability of this reaction leaves you so much to explore. This first hit my radar back in 2018 after it was covered in science in school, and I've seen lots of variations since, some of which I'll be covering here. Marissa Prolongo and Gabriel Pinto suggested sticking a lollipop on a handheld milk frother, a little bit like this one, but of course, if you don't have one of these, it certainly won't stop you from just stirring with your hands. The reaction proceeds, as you'll see, quite quickly. Before the lesson, tape the stick to the arm of the whisk. You can use the whisky loop at the end to support the lollipop head. Don't forget to fold over the end of the tape if you want to find it again afterwards for easy removal. You don't really need to clamp the whisk, but if you want your hands free for the demonstration like I did, then I would also clamp that ahead of time. You want to be able to find a spot where your gripping may be sort of lower down here, nearer the center of gravity, such that when the arm starts wiggling around, the whole thing is not going to sort of um, find its way loose. Now I found with my glassware, you need to use at least a 250 mil conical flask if you want to get the lollipop through its neck. So I'm going to use one of those, but clearly you ought to check the lollipop and your flasks ahead of time. The next bit I would do in front of the class, as you will find even without any sugar, the manganate will begin to react in the alkaline solution if you leave it around too long. In goes 200 ml of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, and to that I'm adding some potassium permanganate, just the tip of a splint here. You can always add more to get the color that you want, but it's very easy to end up with a solution that's so dark that you can't actually see through it. And clearly, the more manganate that you add, the longer you're going to have to wait for the reaction to complete. Pop in your lollipop and enjoy the show. Over the next minute or so, you will see some color changes. Uh, we have four oxidation states of manganese you might look out for. Manganese 7, 6, 4, and eventually, although you may not convincingly see this within the time frame of a lesson, oxidation state plus 2. As we go from MnO4- to MnO4-2-, there's a color change from purple to green. But of course, if you mix those two, you'll create a bluish color. After that, we get a colloidal suspension of solid MnO2 particles with the oxidation state of plus 4. While students might have seen the very dark brown, or as it appears to me, black manganese dioxide in some of their catalysis experiments in school, uh, in this reaction, at the low levels that we're producing it here, it's going to appear sort of yellow-orange. At this point, I usually remove my lolly, as you can usually get two demos out of this setup. Eagle-eyed viewers might have spotted, actually, in some of the previous footage, I actually started with a partially reacted lollipop on the end there. There is, however, likely going to already be enough glucose in solution to take your manganese all the way down to oxidation state plus two, which at these concentrations is essentially colorless. Now you have the basic setup good to go. You have a wealth of different adaptations that you can play with. I've seen people on Twitter doing variations without stirring, and here you can see me side by side comparing the reaction with a sugar cube and on the left there with a dextrose tablet to see how much better the glucose is at reducing the manganese. If you look closely, you might suspect some confounding though, as the dextrose tablet was bubbling a little bit of CO2 upwards and carrying some sugar solution with it, while it's clear that the dense sucrose solution was parked stubbornly at the base of its beaker. 
I think one of the cutest adaptations that I've seen for this is simply setting up a magnetic stirrer with a candy cane. Clearly, there is a variation of this demonstration for all times of the year. Any glucose syrup based candy works the fastest, but I'm sure that we can get viewers out there who have some great international contributions with their own variations of sweets. Certainly, you can walk into a shop around here at this time of the year and buy cat's tongues. So I bet there are some equally bizarre sweets out there wherever you're living. If you manage to get some cool ones, please do send in your best efforts to EIC. You can work out how to get in touch with us on the Education and Chemistry contact page. Mm -hmm.